Hi, my name is Christiana Anastasia Schreifels, and I am making a video um, about a word that the Lord gave me this this um, morning when I was on a global prayer line. Um, this is my first time making a video, but I felt very, um, I just felt extremely prompted by the Lord to put this out there. So that's what I'm doing. Um, my ministry name is Christiana Anastasia Ministries, and this will be put on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm very glad you're here to hear this. I hope this is encouraging to you. It is definitely a timely message for where we are in um, historically for the body of Christ. Um, and I'm just going to pray, open up in prayer. I can't find my <laughs> my regular glasses, so I had to go get um, Dollar Tree Dollar glasses, and they're working really well except the color. <laughs> but anyways, it doesn't matter. All right, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you ahead of time for um, just being here with me. Father God, I just pray that this blesses everybody that would hear this message. Um Hold on, I'm going to put worship music on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, Heavenly Father, just use this to encourage fathers and mothers and um, that have actual children and uh, spiritual fathers and mothers as well, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the hour that we live in. Truly, you are showing... <laughs> You're always showing us, Lord, that your Bible is coming to pass right before our very eyes. And we are awakened, Lord, to recognize it, to rejoice in it, and to prepare the way for you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Okay, so this morning um, at 8.30, I was on a prayer line. Um, I've been doing this prayer line for a few years now, and um, this was a profound vision because it was so vivid. It was as if I was there, and I am i know some of you understand what I'm saying. Okay, so this is what the vision was. Um, first off, it was, I was seeing fathers and mothers. Now, I didn't know that at first. But as I was praying into the dream and asking the Lord for understanding, what I saw were uh, just a multitude of men, a multitude of men. Um, these were thousands and thousands and thousands of men, but they were all in their own homes, wherever they were at. They were in their own time and space. And what I saw was, I just saw men crying out to the Lord saying, Lord, can you hear me? Lord, I want my family restored. Lord, can you help me? be a man of God, can you help me love my family? I saw men weeping. Um, I saw some just, you know, talking out loud to the Lord. It was like a movie. And, um, and then I saw moms or women, and I didn't know, of course, that these were moms, but I did see that these were, there was multitudes and multitudes and multitudes of women too. And what I saw was, is that they were crying out to the Lord in their own private time and space. And what the Lord showed me was that they were um, actually repenting of being bitter and embittered and unforgiving and judgmental towards their husbands and crying out and saying, Lord, help me to love the way that you love. Help me to forgive. Help me to... Um, just help me, you know, and what I, what the common ground was, the theme that I saw between these men and these women, because the men were crying out and asking the Lord to show them, to teach them how to love their wives, to teach them how to love their, their children, and to teach them how to become sons of the Lord, to be pleasing to the Lord, and, um, so, as I was praying, I saw the this amazing, you know, pretty much like motion picture. And um, what I saw next was the men kneeled down 
be for their wives. They, you know, many of these men didn't live with their wives anymore. It even appeared that some had divorced them and it had been many, many, many years between the time that he, you know, these men have seen their first wife, you know, or wives, but I got the impression, you know, the, you know, the original, you know, not to offend anybody <laughs> at all. Um, but um, I saw the men kneeling down, going to these their houses, their wives' house, kneeling down and asking for forgiveness. And this was like thousands all at once, if not hundreds. I don't know. It was just, I couldn't count. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't fathom the amount of people. However, um, then the next scene that I saw was, I saw even older men. Um, I saw them, you know, as grandpa ages. You know, however grandpas are, you know, in their 40s all the way to their 80s and 90s. And I saw men of white hair. And I saw them coming to their wives. And these wives were grandmas by now. And weeping and, um, and saying, please forgive me that I left. Please forgive me that I gave up. Please forgive me that I didn't have the strength that I did not know how to love that I did not know how to provide I ran because I was afraid so many different conversations it was amazing it was beautiful I um, I couldn't help I couldn't keep talking because I was overwhelmed with the motion that the Lord is restoring families the Lord is bringing you know us his body to a place of repentance because you know the truth is, is our country cannot get healed if the primary foundation of our nation, which is the family unit, if we do not heal our families, there is no way our nation will get healed because the sin begins in the home or the obedience begins in the home. You know, everything is a paradox as we know in life. We can choose right, we can choose wrong. And it affects everything. And it has trickled, you know, all the way up to how our nation has become. You know, and so um, the next picture I saw was, I saw men embracing their wives. Breaking down. Really? Just, they were both weeping. I saw older men, grandmas and grandpas weeping. And then I saw children being embraced by this, by the families that they belong to. But I also saw adult children being embraced by the moms and the dads. And I just saw weeping. And they were holding each other so tightly as if they were like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. And I heard words of affirmation, words of asking forgiveness and saying, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm going to deal with what mess I made. Moms and dads alike, mostly fathers. And I just saw the children, these even the adult children, hanging on so tight to their moms and dads because of the damage that had been done because of divorce infidelity, pride, arrogance, you know, what have you, it doesn't matter, we all are human and we get it, you know, I'm married and I have children and I've been married almost 19 years and so I understand this thing, you know, that the Lord was showing me, because our family is going through a lot of healing right now too, anyway, so what I heard the Lord say was, and this is the scripture, um, um, I heard Okay, it's just Joel 2. Um, awesome, awesome, powerful. Those scriptures are always powerful. The Word of God is powerful. Active like a two-edged sword, you know. So here we go. I'm going to read you the scripture. <laughs> and and um, it says here, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never again be put to shame. 
You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and there is none else, and my people shall never again be put to shame. That's Joel 2, 25-27, and I'm reading from a um, English Standard Version, if you wanted to know what version of the Bible I'm reading. <laughs> okay, so then the next picture that I saw was... <laughs> It was a plump, it was like a rope, a rope that was like dropped from heaven, literally, into the houses of the saints, so that this is my phone plug, if you could understand. So it literally dropped from the sky, a plumb, you know, a, it was like a rope, and I didn't know it was a plumb line. And then I saw it go into all these houses, and um, I, you know, I was like, Lord, what is that? And he said, it's my plumb line, it's my plumb line. I am judging my people in, you know, that belong to him. I am coming to their homes and I am having them be confronted with the things that, you know, have been out of order, the things in disarray, the things that have caused chaos. And so this is the title of this message. It's called The Lord's Plumb Line. And so I, I researched scripture on plumb line and the scripture that stood out to me. You know, the first one that comes to me, of course, is in Amos. You know, that's the, the one that is, you know, the usual scripture. And I read it, and it, you know, it said here, oh gosh, where did I, I just marked it. But this is not my Bible, because I, my Bible is upstairs, and I was using my husband's Bible. But basically, it talks about, you know, um, the Lord's plumb line, and I'm sorry that I don't have the actual scripture because I wrote it down, at least I thought I did. Let me get it for you because that's important. So this was the original one that I that I came to, plumb line, Amos. I'm sorry I wasn't prepared here. Okay. But I'm going to read you the other one that the Lord highlighted to me when it comes to the families right now being healed. Um, okay, it said here, the justice, justice, the plumb line, Amos 7, 7 through 15. This is what he showed me. This is Amos the prophet. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. So um, the Lord said, that's not the scripture, though. So then I kept researching and I found the scripture that God is using right now for us. In Zechariah 4.10, it says, for who has despised the day of small beginnings? But these, I, um, these will be glad. These seven will be glad. These seven will be glad when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These are the eyes of the Lord, which range to and fro throughout the earth. So I did a study on that, and this really touched my heart. So I'm going to read to you what I found, um, what the Lord is doing in our homes. So the seven eyes are the seven spirits of the Lord. And I know um, that's a whole nother study. And I encourage you to, you know, <laughs> study the scripture because we, we must hide it in our hearts so that we do not sin against the Lord. But what the Lord emphasized to me during uh, me studying this was, here. Okay. I always feel like I'm not. I find everything when I'm not online and recording, but then I can't find it when I'm going back to show you what God has shown me. So please forgive me, um, but I will find it. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, this is really beautiful. So, um, the seven eyes are the Lord's eyes. And what spoke to me, is this the one? No, that's not the one. No wonder I'm in, I'm in Joel. So please forgive me. I had it set up, but it's gone now. Okay, so let me just go there and not panic. Thank you for your patience. Hallelujah, Lord. 
thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, Lord, that the message that you want out goes out according to your Holy Spirit, Lord, and not my will. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay. Here we go. I found it. Thank you. So I had clicked off of it, apparently. Um, yeah, it's all good. God is good anyway. <laughs> it's He covers my boo-boos here. Okay. So when he talks about the seven, okay, I'm going to read that scripture again. He talks about the seven. He's talking about the eyes of the Lord. And so the Lord says, you know, do not despise the day of small beginnings, right? Okay. Zechariah's question rings true to us today where it says, have I despised the small things, the day of small things? And so you're going to... You're going to see over time the, the beginnings of the restoration of the families, of course, the families of the righteous in the Lord. Um, and the Lord says that we are not, that small things matter. And the small things are basically the, pro, include the process of change. It's the process of change because we need um, Spurgeon speaks about us needing courage in the day of small things so that we don't lose the sight of the vision that God has put into us, right? Um, which makes a lot of sense. Please listen. For the seven, these seven, and that's the Lord's eyes, the seven are the eyes of the Lord mentioned in this context. They rejoice. The Lord is rejoicing. When he sees Zerubbabel, or they see Zerubbabel, uh, Babel busy with building, with the building work, with the plumb line in his hand, the eyes of the Lord see it all, and they are happy to see God's people at work. Though the work was empowered by the Spirit of God, Zerubbabel still needed his plumb line. He still needed to get to work. Do you hear what I'm saying? He still needed to get to work. God could have given Zerubbabel and he could give us give us to the fathers and mothers that I saw in this vision a shortcut and instantly miraculously finish the work however that isn't how God always does things because the work in the life of us as in Zerubbabel is as important to God as his work that he's doing through Zerubbabel, and in this case, us as moms and dads. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. That's that's powerful. That's powerful. So this is what the Lord is doing. And then the other scripture that the Lord had directed me to was Romans 8, 18 through 19. I'm going to read that to you, and I just really hope you're seeing the beauty of this message. This is happening right now for us in the body of Christ. So all the years that you sown in prayer and tears and fasting and praying for the, the deliverance of your family, know that God has heard you and it is happening now and the work has already begun. And, and remember Philippians 1, 6, he who began a good work in us is faithful to complete it. He, he is the completer. He's the completion. We just have to obey and do. So fathers and mothers, I'm telling you right now, do what God is telling you. Restoration, restoration, restoration. Because we need to restore our families. And it has to start with our homes. Because it goes into the churches then. And then it goes out into the world and our nation. And our nation is literally being confronted. We're being confronted so that our nation can turn back to the Lord. And it's, you know, it's all such a big picture, but you know, God is, God is not overwhelmed and that's, and he's on the throne and nothing surprises him. And it's, he, he wins the war. Remember that. Okay. So, um, Romans 8, 18, future glory. That's the title of this section of the chapter. Uh, for I consider that the sufferings, <laughs> here we go again, a lot of work. Praise the Lord for that. He changes us. He changes our character of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation 
waits with eager longing, hallelujah, for the revealing of the sons of God. Wow. So we are those sons of God, and he is working it out in us, what he is doing in healing our families in this vision that the Lord showed me. So I want to just share with you um, the, the, the last part of the vision um, that is a big part of the vision because it was powerful and overwhelming. Um, so what I saw was after I saw the plumb line coming into the homes, um, the next scene was, uh, it almost looked medieval. <laughs> I love movies like that. The, you know, Ooh, Lord of the Rings and things like that. Um, what I saw was, was profound. I, I was in a, like a valley. Um, and it was mountainous, but the, but the, uh, around, but the mountains were, were not so, so high, but they were, they were mountains. And what I saw and what I heard was a great army of horses in the distance. At first, I didn't know it was horses, but I kept, I was sort of, you know, amazed at what I was seeing and what I was hearing because I was observing this. And I saw, um, like, dust getting kicked up, and I just kept hearing the thunder of whatever was hitting the ground. And it was obviously moving towards um, where I was at. And then when I looked, it was just a lot of horses, thousands of them it looked like, I don't know. Um, and then what I saw on these horses was an army. And guess what the army was made of? Moms and dads. It was made of moms and dads. The same moms and dads that I saw that were being restored at the beginning of this open vision. Holy Lord. And um, when I looked to the left on the side where they were headed towards, I saw children. Now, these were not the children of their own body. These were not their biological kids. These were children that had been orphaned, forgotten. Um, they clearly had no one to protect them. And I saw... What I, when I looked closer, it was disturbing what I saw. They were being, um, you know, told terrible things. The children were cowering. Um, they were being hit. It, you know, it was, it was awful. And there were, there were so many children, I could not count them. But what I saw was, is that these parents, <laughs> us, we came with swords and arrow, bows and arrows. And I literally saw the arrows and the swords strike down and, you know, shoot at with the arrows, the ones that had the arrows, these perpetrators that were harming the children. Now, the first thought I had was the sex trafficking industry that is, you know, harming children, especially those that are in the foster care system. And we, you know, if you're aware of what's been going on for a while in our country, um, this is a real thing. It's, it's evil, and it grieves the Lord's heart, and it should grieve our heart. And what I heard the Lord say when I saw these parents, us, the body of Christ, after, you know, our families are restored or are getting restored, healing's happening in our families, the Lord's heart became our hearts and we rescued these kids from this terrible system and I just felt so empowered yet so righteously angry at what I saw and I was like you know praying and thanking the Lord for waking us up and for calling us to account to turn our eyes towards what we are seeing and we are doing nothing. And so church, I'm just saying, be encouraged. I believe that there are many of us who have been prompted to adopt children, even children that have aged out of the system where their chances are not to be, you know, are not good for them to get adopted. And I just heard the Lord say, 
My spirit of adoption is upon my church and and my and the children and my children will go get those children and I just I just want to say yes and amen to the Lord for that. Whoever is hearing this, you know, um, even if you know somebody that has been prompted by the Holy Spirit to adopt, to foster, share this with them. This is a confirmation. It's a confirmation for us. And I just bless you uh, for being one of those thousands or hundreds of thousands that God has called to rescue these children out of the pit of this system because it's not working and they belong. Those are God's creation. Those are God's creation. And we can't stand by church and pretend that we aren't seeing this and yet care only about what's inside of our homes. And that's why, you know, God is a God of order. And that's why he's calling our houses into order, moms and dads, including me and my husband. And we're saying, yes, Lord, we hear you. Hallelujah. So the Lord gave me that scripture. I'm going to share it with you. Oh, I hope I wrote it down. I'm so silly. Oh. Okay. Okay, here it is. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, it says here, chapter 4, the great day of the Lord. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. He is uprooting. He's beginning to uproot. I know we're seeing a lot of evil right now, and I know that it'll increase as, you know, the Lord, um, as we prepare for the Lord's coming, you know, that's what it's been like since, you know, the book of Acts, the beginning of the Lord's church. But, you know, the the awesome thing about that is that we also increase in holiness because the bride is getting, um, you know, we're becoming the bride because it says that the Lord comes back for a pure and spotless bride. And, and that can only happen by sanctification. And that's what God's calling us to right now. And he has been calling us to it. But now we're answering the call. We're feeling that plumb line in our homes. Okay, so um, let me continue to read. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, here's the, there's one, this is um, the highlighted scripture God gave me. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord, before the day of the awesome, pardon me, before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with the decree of utter destruction. And so what this showed me is that the Lord said, Oh, hallelujah, Lord. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus, that this utter day of destruction is getting thwarted because we're answering the call. To repent, to repent, and to turn our families to the Lord, to turn our hearts to the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We just praise you for what you're doing. And um, I just want to say, I hope you're encouraged by this. The last scene that I saw in this vision, this open vision, was amazing. Um, I don't paint white, well, you know, I just don't. But what I saw was, the last scene was, of this vision, was, um, I, can't, I cannot describe how many horses there were in a perfect lineup. It was a perfect lineup of horses. And I saw the men of God, the sons of God. Um, these were the fathers that were in this um, earlier vision part or scene of this vision. They had, they were sitting on their horses in perfect formation of a line. And there was a fortress in front of them, like an, I don't know, it was like a wall, but it was a fortress and it was an evil fortress. And I saw them take their bows and arrows and draw back their bows. And then the Lord said, I heard this voice. He said, 
it was like, huh? Like, you know, attention. It was a very powerful, holy voice. And all of a sudden, the, um, the men raised their bows and pulled back their arrows so that they would go up and over into the fortress. And immediately I saw them release their bows and they were all in unison. And the Lord said that I'm bringing down the walls, the ancient walls that have long been, I guess, erected against the children. And I just believe that the Lord is going to use the body of Christ <laughs> in a mighty powerful way to restore the lost children, the ones that have no parents to to him because we're going to be the mothers and fathers the sons and daughters of God are being revealed in this season and I just pray you're encouraged if this um, confirms and affirms what the Lord has been showing you then praise the Lord all glory be to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth he came in the flesh and I just want to close now in prayer Lord, I just want to thank you for what you showed me today, Father God, that I was able to share this, Lord God. Father God, to every mom and dad here, even spiritual ones, Lord, I just ask you, Lord, to um, unravel your plan for their life, Father God. And um, Lord, I just decree right now, let your kingdom come, let your will be done here on earth as it is written in heaven for each family each ear that is hearing this message, Lord, that you be given the glory, Lord, um, Father God, and that we um, stand unified in your Holy Spirit so that we can heal our homes, Father God, and that restoration will occur. And ultimately, Lord, that we would, Father God, um, take dominion in the places that you're calling us to, Father God, so that we can, Lord, bring to you um, what is rightfully yours in Jesus' mighty name, and that is your people that have been lost. Father God, thank you for what you're doing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.